Generative grammar. The first part of the 20th century has been influenced by structuralist approach to language or to grammar. However, with the publishing of uh, syntactic structure in 1957 uh, by Chomsky, there was a revolution in the studies of language. And there is a new approach to language and to understanding uh, the concepts of language. So, it's a linguistic theory that regards grammar as a system of rules that generates exactly those combinations of words that form grammatical sentences in a given language. So, this generative approach uh, was basically given to dig out rules from the languages and these rules were the rules on which sentences, phrases are uh, made. And they were the type of phrases or sentences which were considered correct by the native speakers. The generative school has focused on the study of syntax, how the uh, sentence, how the, uh, the element of a sentence are arranged or ordered in a meaningful whole but has also addressed other aspects of a language structure, including morphology and phonology. Uh, they have also worked on phonology, right, and morphology. The, especially uh, with regards to phonology, the, uh, the stress which has been very difficult to mark on the word was known to the people, to the, uh, to the uh, academicians, uh, by generative phonology, by the work on, uh, on phonology, which is known as generative phonology. Early version of Chomsky's theory were called transformational grammar. Early version was, uh, this generic grammar was called transformational uh, generative grammar or transformational grammar, TG, in which he discusses about rules which actually transform sentences from deep level to the surface level, which is still used as a general term that includes his subsequent theories. So the same theory is used in deep and uh, uh, surface structure uh, that you will study later. Generativists have argued that many of the properties of uh, generative grammar arise from a universal grammar that is innate to the human brain rather than being learned from the environment. This was the basic approach of Chomsky. Chomsky be believed that uh, people are hardwired or have an innate capability to use a language. So, what he says that the properties of generative grammar arise from a universal grammar. Universal grammar that all the human beings have a grammar uh, in an innate grammar in them, which is rule governed, uh, which, is, which is governed by certain rules of that language. Noam Chomsky opposed the earlier theories of structuralism by rejecting the idea that each language is different from the other. He claimed that languages have structure, though their rules are different. Some, as we, uh, some languages, for example, start with a, sub, with a noun phrase and a verb phrase. Some start with a verb phrase and a noun phrase. Some uh, noun phrase may have uh, a noun in the end. Some may have uh, an adjective after the noun. So, there are differences, but they are all ruled, ruled, governed. So, the basic concept in generative grammar is search for the rules to recognize grammatical sentences in a se language. So, it tells which sentences are grammatically correct and which are not grammatically correct. So, this is one of the objective or one of the aims of uh, uh, or basic concept of generative grammar. And then, it differentiated them from improper sequence of words or ungrammatical sentences in the same language. For example, if we make a sentence in which we have noun phrase, noun phrase and verb phrase, so it will be turned as an incorrect sentence in English language because these, this uh, structure does not conform to the usual uh, rule of the uh, sentence structure in English language. So similarly, we can apply the same rules in other languages. 
the sentence is represented as a tree having branches denoting uh, the subordinate and uh, superordinate elements rather than just a sequence of words so it's not a linear concept it try to understand the structure on the basis of a certain hierarchy in which there are some uh, ordin uh, subordinate and there are some super subordinate right so let's look at a sentence we have a sentence and we can see that sentence consists of a noun phrase and a verb phrase a noun phrase consists of a determiner and a noun phrase the cat and verb phrase consists of the verb eight and then noun phrase determiner and noun phrase the mouse so we can know that sentence the subordinate noun phrase is directly subordinate to the sentence in the first and then the second noun phrase the mouse is super subordinate to the verb phrase which is subordinate to the sentence so in this way we can understand the hierarchy of the sentence in english and we know that which components which elements are higher than the other elements so genetic grammar attempts to formalize the implicit rule that a person uses while speaking his native language so when we speak our native language the rules that basically uh, at work in our mind are brought forth or uh, brought into light uh, with the help of uh, genetic grammar and the rules of generative grammar may appear to be useful only in language studies however they are helpful in language studies so for as uh, 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 we the type of language we use for teaching at our schools is a different type of language or we we use uh, the approach used here is uh, uh, used here is uh, prescriptive approach so these generative rules really help us in understanding how language are you how language uses different roles and how this uh, these rules are found uh, in the deep structures or in the depth of our mind when we use a language and how these uh, uh, these rules which are at deep structures uh, turn into surface structure